thank you so much for tuning back into my YouTube channel. If you don't know me, hi, how are you? My name is Rosa. And for current subscribers, thank you guys so much for subscribing. Can't wait to make more videos for my new and current subscribers. So please stay tuned for this video. So today I'm going to be talking about a topic that's a little bit different. Sorry if I'm like talking really fast. I'm a little winded. I just made my bed because I haven't made it in like forever. Oh, <sighs> so... This video is going to be about day in the life of a clinical technologist, medical laboratory technology. What is that? What do we do? What is that at all? Like, I don't know what that is. You might be saying that, but after this video, you will know what this is. So my name is Rosa. I am a clinical laboratory technologist or scientist. Uh, the terms are interchangeable. Basically, my job description and what I do in my daily job, I'm currently training right now, but when I am done training, what I will be doing is I am actually working in a laboratory and there's many different types of laboratories. There's laboratories where um, only they only test certain types of samples. There's labs that test all types of samples. Um, there's some that are reference laboratories. There's some that, you know, only take uh, samples from a specific another like specific clinic or lab or hospital many different types mine is a hospital laboratory so mine's very general with what we do and the testing that we do so um with my testing we basically test for all the specimens that come in from the hospital and anything that we don't test we send out to a reference lab so we test inpatients we test um people on the floors on the different units that we have in the hospital so there's a couple of units that we do one examples can be like obstetrics so women who are just giving birth like we test their their um samples and the babies that are born as well and just to give a little example people who are going into surgeries we have to you know make sure everything's okay like with their samples with their laboratory work in order for the doctor to approve that surgery and say like hey you know they're ready. They can go into surgery. Let's make it that done. Let's get that out of the way. Let's go. So I am currently training on the night shift. No, not night shift. I'm sorry. Evening shift. I will be working as a night shift tech. So I'll be working overnight by myself in the laboratory, doing everything on my own, which I'm very excited about, a little nervous about because, you know, I am a new technician. I have not been doing this for a very long time. I've only been doing this for about a little over a month. I've actually been doing really good on my training. I mean, getting done a lot faster than I thought I was going to get done and like, you know, being able to take in and absorb everything that I am learning. At the same time, I am there about almost 40 hours a week, if not 40 hours a week, training every single day, learning these skills, learning what I'm going to do during my job and just, you know, taking everything in from my, uh, my proctors. I forgot what we call them. Um, basically, the people who are supervising us, like my coworkers who are supervising me in order to train me to be able to do my job. So in order to get into a career like this, what did I have to do? That's probably your first question. Like, hey, like this sounds kind of cool. What do you do? How can I do this? So I went to a four year university in order to be able to get my Bachelor of Science in Medical Laboratory Science. That is what my degree is called. A lot of places call it different things. There's also a two year program where it's called um, Medical Technology. And they, a lot of them you can do that at community college is that offer them or yeah, different programs that offer two years. I don't, I'm not really familiar with any of them just because I didn't do the two year, I actually did the four year. But for the most part, um, they're very similar. The only difference is the two year, you are more focused in doing that two year training after you complete your gen eds and the four year, you know, you're kind of like brought in, you're taking all your gen eds, either at a community college or that four year university. And then, you know, you use like it's basically all sciences, not just gen ed, you're also taking a lot of the sciences as well. And uh, overall, I love it. I love what I did. I'm really glad I chose the career path I did. And the reason I chose it was because I was originally a bio major and I didn't know what I was gonna do with that bio major. Like part of me was like, ooh, maybe I wanna go to med school. Part, other part, another part of me was like, ooh, if I don't get into med school, if I decide not to go to med school, what am I gonna do? Like, am I just gonna work? as someone's like lab assistant until I can possibly get into med school. And even then I'm not guaranteed to get in if I even try to take all these steps. So I wanted a secure career where I knew I would have lots of options after graduation to either work, to go back to school if I decide to, do, to take that path to go back to school, which is kind of what I'm doing right now a little bit. And I'm really happy about that. I'm still happy I have a lot of that flexibility to decide like if I want to like advance in my career 
and there's so many different things that I can do. So I was able to, yeah, do the four year, graduated in May, took some time off for, you know, a number of reasons. Everyone has their reasons for taking time off from school before working. Some may work right away, some may not. And either one is totally fine, you know. There's people who work right away, they're like, oh wow, like I just want to like start making money right away. And me, I had a little bit of different ideas. I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do exactly right after I got out of school. And I still needed to take my exam and everything for um, becoming a clinical laboratory scientist. So that's also another part of it. Once you complete your four year, you have to take the certifying exam. So in order to work as a clinical laboratory scientist, some jobs do require it, some jobs don't. You have to take the um, BOC, the Board of Certification Exam, through the ASCP. We go, American Society for Clinical Pathology. Okay, we got that in our heads? Yeah, yeah, good. Okay, so yeah, they are the ones who basically certify you. They're the organization who certifies you in order to be able to obtain your license. You also have to do continuing education after that. So even though you're done your license, you're technically not done. You still have to make sure you keep up with any of like the procedures and protocols and you know things that the American Society for Clinical Pathology wants you to keep up with in order to maintain your license. Because once you get your license, that doesn't mean that, you know, you're out of the blue, like you don't have to ever worry about learning anything new again. And if that's something you want to do, then that's this is probably not the career for you because you still continue to learn. Medicine is always changing, always evolving. Same regards with the laboratory. Medicine and lab are connected. They're completely, completely connected together. Like you can't even imagine like how many doctors are so grateful for the people in the lab. And even though like a lot of times like the lab is not as appreciated as other areas, such as like nursing or like other types of areas in the lab that people do get more recognition for, like we are a very vital part to those results that the doctor has to give to the patient. Like if something is run incorrectly, that can mean that the patient is not getting what they need, that they are not being treated properly. They can have a whole set of issues come up. They can get sick, they can die even like, and that's like one of the worst things that can ever happen. Like, you know, let God forbid, like there was a lab result that turned out wrong and because of something like, you know, maybe you missed something, maybe there was an error with the machine and you know, that ends a, pa that ends a person's life. Like this, they're now, we're not just treating patients, we are treating people, real people. It could be your people, like your mom, your dad, your neighbor, someone you may know, someone you may not know. Like there's still people, there's still a human being that we are treating and it's not just a, you know, little tube that we're treating. It's an actual person. And, you know, sometimes it may be kind of hard to remember that when you are just in the lab all day. But, you know, if you're like me, I'm also going to be like interacting on the floor with the patients a lot of times. And I have already done that through my um, training. And it really just goes to show like you are not only like the person who is running the test, but you like that's the, there's a face behind that person, behind those results, behind that tube that you're getting and you're receiving. Like there is someone you're treating and you know, it's your job, your responsibility and my job and my responsibility if you're in the same role that I am to be able to give the best results possible. You have the training, you have the knowledge, like you wanna do what's best for the patient. If you don't know the answer to something, someone can get that for you or you can ask someone who is more knowledgeable than you because you know the more than anything we want to be able to treat these people we want to give them a best quality of life so overall in my training it's been going super well like i said i started on day shifts so day shifts i worked from about 6 a.m so i mean i had to get about 5 a.m and from 6 a.m to about 2 30 p.m and in between i get two 15 minute breaks and a 30 minute lunch and that is on the day shift I really enjoyed it. I trained with about two or three different people. Sometimes I rotated who I was trained with and I love them. They're very knowledgeable. I was able to learn so much and the areas I trained in were hematology. So hematology has to do with the study of blood and we had a like what I had to do was I was able to look in them under the microscope after the patient's test results have run under the machine. So with that we get all of the patient's um, blood indices so basically that means that we are kind of reporting out the different types of aspects that are within the blood so an example is um, the size of the red blood cell the amount of hemoglobin that's in the red blood cell so kind of what the parts that make up the red blood cell and the other parts as well such as like platelets so I trained in hematology look under the microscope 
The other area where I was training in was called urinalysis. So basically we are running the urine specimens under a machine as well and we get at the results that are reported out and we have to do microscopic exams. So basically we are also looking under the microscope and seeing if there's anything within the urine that is abnormal. Certain things that are abnormal or abnormal are different casts. They're like, like little, like kind of like, I want to say like rectangular figures in the urine that can mean a lot of different things. It can mean that there is um, problems within the kidneys, problems within the, the filtration system that is within that system that brings out the urine. Um, there could be bacteria if there's an infection, like a kidney infection, UTI, stuff like that. And so those are the two main areas that I've trained in so far. And I've learned so much. And now I am actually training on the evening shift in hem and not hematology, in blood banking. And in blood banking, what we are doing is we are the ones who are responsible for giving you know, the little bags of blood. I don't know if you, maybe you've seen them, they look pretty small. Or like if you've donated blood, you're kind of aware of how they look like. So basically we test patients for their blood types. So like me, I am like my blood type is different from this other person's or this person's. There's four different main blood types. And you know, we test each patient that comes into the hospital, even if they do have a prior result from a different clinic or hospital they were seen at, we always test them for their blood type when they come into the hospital, just because you never know. They might eventually need a bag of blood, such as people who are in like like collisions, any type of trauma situation, they might need a bag of blood. And so we also test those units that the person may need for a trans blood transfusion, which is when they're getting like another person's um, blood because they don't have a sufficient amount of blood. So we test those units against that person's unit, the patient's unit. And we test those together to make sure they are compatible. And there's a lot of different things within the blood. That is a whole another subject in itself. I could probably make a whole another video on all of these things that I'm like areas of the lab that I'm learning right now. But I'm not gonna go too far into that. I'm just gonna give you a general overview of like what I've learned so far. And I'm really enjoying it. My shifts kind of vary a little bit on the evening shifts. So my evening shifts are right now, since I am still in school, they do switch on. Tuesdays and Thursdays, but Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I am there from like 2 o'clock to 11 p.m. So that is the evening shift. And when I do switch over to nights, because I am actually going to be a night tech working alone in the laboratory, I'm going to be there from about 10 30, 10 30 to 11 to like 7 a.m. So that's something to keep in mind when you think about what kind of career you want to do when you graduate college. This is something that's very flexible. If you love science, you're going to love it. You're doing so much. It's so much within, like you're not really interacting with patients very much, but you are learning that real science behind it. If that's something you're interested in, if you don't really want to deal with patients as much, but at the same time, you still want to make a difference within, you know, the medical setting and being a part of that, this job will be perfect for you. This job and career will be perfect for you. Like I am so happy with my choice. I am very happy and there's a lot of variety. Like there's different, so many different settings you can work at. There's big hospitals you can work at. If you don't, if you want to work at a big hospital who has different sections of the lab and you're like the main person in that area. Or there's also places where you're a generalist, like I will be a generalist, where you get to focus on a lot of different areas of the lab. And you get to see all different types of samples, all different types of results. So you're the one who's in charge of entering in those results. There's blood banks where basically you're only focusing on testing of the blood that comes in and to you know give out to all the other places that need it and there's also reference laboratories where you don't deal with any barely I don't think you ever really deal with any nurses any doctors like basically what you do is like you get those tests you run them they go back to where they need to go you report out those results but yet you don't really like interact with any other medical staff besides your labs your lab tech, your fellow lab technicians who are working there with you. So there's just so many different areas and please, 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 if you have any questions for me, please leave them down below. What it takes, kind of the salary range. I know a lot of you guys are probably interested like, hey, how much would I make as a lab tech? Well, it varies. I can't give you exact number, but you can definitely look it up just because 
it may be different for someone who's been working in the lab like my co-workers who have been working there for like 30 plus years like i'm sure they're making way more bank than i am or there's also people like in different areas of uh, the country who may not be making as much as i make or like maybe they're only making more like it really just depends where you live and what the salary is in your state so that can play a lot into it. your experience plays a lot into it um if there's any sign on bonuses that plays a big part into it too like how much money you'll make how much money you're bringing in so if anything like i wish i can give you a, a fair number but just because i don't know where you're viewing from i'm not sure what state you live in it just varies like i can't give you a set number mine is like a fairly good range for starting off as a new tech and where i live so i'm very happy with the salary i'm getting at the moment another big thing to think about too is like if you are interested in this career like what kind of setting do you want to work in not just like the type of lab but also what kind of workload do you like do you like more of a relaxed workload do you want to only work a certain set of hours so like somewhere like a clinic that's only open in a day do you want to work overnight do you want to work alone do you want to work with a lot of other people do you only want to work with some people like that's a really big thing and i just think this career is very great because you have a very big variety of like the things you can do the people you can work with the types of settings you want to work in and you're still doing the same thing even though there may be different tests that you'll be running that someone else may not know how to run or vice versa but there's just so much variety there's so much to learn it's a continuing career it's, you continue to learn every single day and you know i just love everything about it so i did go on a little bit tangent of everything about this career but this is what i do guys so please have bunch of questions for me like i would love to answer so many of them please like and subscribe please share this video share this to people in college who are bio majors and be like hey like if you want to do something in the lab look at her video see what she's doing ask her about it how can you get to do this like she is what kind of school do i have to go to like please let me know there's so much online too like what kind of schools this program is available at it is shrinking though like i know I was talking to a lot of my older coworkers who are in the lab who have been working there for like you know 30 40 years or like for started off working in the lab from when they were there was bill like not billions but there was a lot of people working in one lab because everything had to be run manually like back in like the 50s there was no machines running the like running the tests like now we have so much machines that the you know biomedical engineers make that's also another area that's kind of like connected with the lab is biomedical engineering because they're the ones who run who make our machines and even as a tech you can move forward and be the person the engineer who fixes those machines which is something maybe i'm going to consider in the future if i want to you know advance and do something a little bit different if you like this video please like and subscribe please share it i want to know if you're a lab tech too like say hi like let me know what's going on i want to get to know you share this with people who may be interested in like wanting to take a different career path that they may not know about that sounds totally like something that they would want to do i'm here to be a resource and there's lots online like i was saying that you can look up that'll help you out with these decisions like i am only giving you like my kind of feel about it but there's also a lot online too if you want to weigh on more pros and cons which i'll probably make a pros and cons video at a later time like once I get more out about this subject and this topic, I want to be able to say like, oh, what's the pros, what's the cons of my job? And I can't really share that yet just because I've only trained, I've only been there for like about a little over a month. So I don't want to give like a wrong opinion when, you know, I'm not totally familiar yet. Like I'm not, I haven't worked by myself yet completely. I'm still training. I will be working by myself later on once I'm fully trained. But for now, it's like, it's just my experience of just training and taking all of this information in from everyone who's helping me and then once i'm on the job on my own then i want to get my like pros and cons opinion like what do i think what's easy for me what's not so please guys thank you so much so much for watching and i hope to see you again on my channel soon please make sure to like and subscribe turn on those bell notifications and i can't wait to share the next video with you thank you